Good morning. Um, I'm Luan Wang from University of Memphis. I'm going to uh, introduce um, the Indian tutorial and um, um, talk about what kind of new architecture uh, concepts we have been developing in the Indian project. And um, then I will uh, br briefly talk about uh, what new open source tools we have developed to support application development. And um, then I will discuss the, the interactions be between the different parts of the platform. And uh, we will uh, talk about how you can be involved uh, in developing these tools and applications. My uh, introduction will co cover some basic concepts of NDN and then um, what kind of tools we are uh, providing to active development. And then I will give an example uh, based on the AR application that uh, we're developing. So um, first of all, we have many exciting new future applications for smart cities, for example. Um, there are mobile health applications monitoring people's health, and smart and connected vehicles, and uh, smart buildings and smart homes. These are um, visions for future IoT applications. But um, in order to support these applications, we need good uh, mobility support. For example, um, in on highways, these vehicles are very fast and their contact time is very short. Um, in the current internet, if they want to talk to each other, they have to know each other's IP address, they have to do some connection, they have to verify each other's um, identity, but during this time, maybe the other car has moved away. So if you are doing this, some kind of uh, host-based communication, it's very hard to support this kind of applications. And also, security is a major challenge. For example, on the left, you can see a car that has been re remotely, remotely hijacked. Um, and on the right, you can see uh, some IoT devices that have been um, compromised to launch denial of service attacks. Um, these are very hard to address in the current uh, architecture. So um, here I'm uh, summarizing some basic problems that are faced by applications uh, today. One of them is the incap incompatible communication models between the applications and uh, the network base. Um, the network cannot support mobility and multitask and multipath forwarding. These are very important to applications. And then we have very complex and inadequate security mechanisms. Um, the, the visions we have for future applications, they are not supported by the current network. So the, the fundamental causes of these problems are uh, host-based uh, packet delivery and channel-based security. So in order to solve those problems, NDNs, uh, NDN has introduced some New ideas wants to name the data instead of the hosts. So we don't have to connect to a host. And also we are using the same data and uh, same name at the application layer and the network layer. This way uh, we don't, we have the same abstraction uh, at the application and the network layer. And at the network layer, we do stateful, stateful forwarding. Uh, and opportunistic caching. So finally, we can directly secure data uh, and not the channels. All right, so I'm going to first um, give you uh, some more um, ideas about how we can do name-based data retrieval. So first of all, um, you can just name the data, for example, my uh, slides you can uh, see that we, we can name it based on my identity and then what kind of uh, content it is and the file name. 
and then if you want to retrieve some uh, temperature data, you can just name the room and then what kind of thermostat and then status. So th this is very um, intuitive for application developers. And then you know, the application can tell the network what it wants and then the network will find it for you. It's very straightforward. However, people often confuse this with uh, Google search. It's uh, really not Google search. The network is not searching everything, uh, everything related to temperature for you. It's based on this name, the network. Okay. So how do you do the forwarding or routing based on the name? So basically the, the producers that um, produce the content advertise their, um, their um, names to the network. And then whoever needs to retrieve the data, they will send interests with the names. For example, the trailer for Star Wars. And then the network will um, forward the interest based on these names. These names have been advertised uh, in the network. So the routers know how to forward them. And then uh, the data will come back from, from the producer. And the data will also be cached in the uh, in the routers. Okay. And uh, notice here, the data comes on the reverse path of the interest because there's already state established in the network to uh, forward the data back. That's called uh, the, uh, the stateful forward. And then if somebody else wants to retrieve the same data, it already has the data cached uh, upstream. So they can directly retrieve the data. This is opportunistic caching in the network. It's helping uh, multiple consumers to retrieve the same content. Uh, we, we can also call it asynchronous multicast. This is something applications would really benefit from. For example, if a large number of people are watching the same video, um, then there's only one copy of the data sent over every path, not 100 copies or million copies. OK, so uh, the network is intelligent because it has a state that records uh, where the interest has been sent. So if you send, if the application sends another interest for the next piece of content, but the uh, producer is no longer uh, uh, available, then the network will figure out it needs to try a, an, a, a different path. And that interest will be routed to another producer that can produce the content. And uh, the data will be retrieved that way. So uh, this is uh, how the name-based forwarding works. And um, we call it adaptive forward because the network can adapt based on where the data comes from or whether data is actually coming uh, from a, per a particular path. If that data is not coming from the path, it will switch to a different path. Okay. So um, these are some basic concepts of how routing and forwarding work. Um, <coughs> and one of the most important piece of the architecture is called uh, data-centric security. So here, we already looked at um, uh, an example of how data can come from any, anywhere, or any producer, or any cache that has the content. So the question is, how do you know that that's the right content you, you're looking for, or right data you're looking for? So this is very important, once you have um, this kind of data-centric architecture, you have to make sure that everyone can authenticate the data. So every piece of data carries a cryptographic signature. Uh, whoever receives it can verify based on the signature. And um, the producer signs the data with this, uh, the key that the producer has. Only the producer has this key. So every consumer can verify. They, they're not getting 
uh, forged data or bad data. This way, the data can come from anywhere uh, because you can validate the data is indeed produced by the producer you, you, you have in mind. Okay. And there's a more authentication about the key that the producer uses. And um, Alex will talk more about that part of the security. So in, in summary, we have this, uh, this hourglass architecture in the end that it has this thin ways with named uh, data and uh, data-centric security. And we have a transfer layer built on top of that thin waste. And we have uh, applications and application protocols on top of that. And below it, we can use any link layer that supports just one hop delivery. This link layer can be the current IP, or it can be TCP, or it can be UDP. So for applications, this means um, two applications Two, two nodes with uh, IP connectivity, they can talk to each other using NDN. Yeah. Like if, if they can establish a TCP connection, they can run the application. If they, uh, yeah, they can um, talk over the TCP connection. Of course, they can talk over the regular link layer, uh, Ethernet, Wi-Fi as well. Um, this is an R glass architecture uh, inspired by the IP architecture. The IP architecture also has this thin ways that makes it possible to support different applications, different transfer layers, and it can sit on top of any link layer. So uh, we, want, we also preserve this hourglass architecture so we can support a wide range of applications. Um, but we have different um, we have, we have different abstraction to support okay, new capability. For example, um, we use interest and data exchange to um, retrieve data from anywhere. And um, we name data so that applications don't have to look up the address of the destination and also try to manage the uh, mobility when that address changes. So uh, this is the naming brings this kind of advantage. Also, the naming can support key exchange and um, validating data and also deriving trust and retrieve new keys. We'll, we'll talk about that later. And then um, we have end-to-end -end security here. And to end means from one application to another application. It's not from one host to another host. So we extend this end to end into applications, not just hosts. Um, this is new capability supported by NDN. Finally, we have um, a new transport layer abstraction called SYNC. It enables multi party. Uh, data sharing instead of just two end. Uh, consumer, uh, sorry, we, we support many consumers, many producers talking to each other. And another new capability is repo. Okay, so um, we have content caches in the network, those are opportunistic. But if you want permanent or persistent storage, there is um, repo that can help uh, producers store and publish data. This way, the producer doesn't have to be online all the time, or you don't have to have a server there online all the time. Okay, so um, this is how the Indian architecture development looks like. We have application design that includes many aspects, how to design namespace, trust, schema, and storage and data distribution, um, bootstrapping. Then we have libraries that um, support the functions at the application. For example, um, the interest data ex exchange, um, 
and uh, the security uh, storage and sync protocols, then we have the forwarder um, supporting that, including how the packet format looks like. It needs to follow every forwarder needs to follow the same packet format. We have FIB, uh, PID, content story in the forwarder, and different routing strategies or forwarding strategies and um, ways to do fast forwarding. And finally, uh, we, we have evaluation software to support all the um, uh, development. So on this side, you can see the different uh, software or packages we, we have developed, including Corona Chat, Indian Khan and Torrent, Indian Fit, Repo NG, and LSR, and DLT, the AR browser we're going to talk about. Those are some examples of applications that apply the Indian thinking um, to support future applications. And then we have um, libraries, Indian CXX, Indian CCL, Corona Sync, PSync, and the RTC, they um, support the design patterns uh, we're going to talk about. And um, these uh, are different forwarder implementations, NFD, NFD Android, and the Riot. There are different platforms, you can see. Um, and finally, we have these evaluation tools, NDN SIM, Mini NDN, and the testbed tools um, for developers. Who want to evaluate the entire system? Okay. So the application that we're going to uh, talk more about is the AR browser. This is uh, an edge-supported mobile uh, real augmented reality application. And you can see that um, we have a, a user holding a camera and. That camera can show a lot of information about the environment, and it can do uh, object recognition, um, and it pulls a lot of data from different sources to produce this view to you. Uh, this is a project supported by uh, NSF through the ICM WEM project, and um, basically the the different users they exchange. Context. Um, there, there are many, many users who can exchange the, the context information surrounding them uh, with each other using uh, the Indian RTC library as the media support. And then this kind of object uh, recognition, all kinds of processing is done uh, on edge devices. The edge de devices provide um, acceleration as a service. So um, they can analyze the scene that's pulled from many users. And um, this also includes uh, data-centric security. So you can authenticate the data you, you get from other places. So this, this application embodies all the new design thinking um, we will talk about, and they will do. Uh, and uh, some of uh, the developers who um, you work, who have been working on this application, will talk more about uh, this application and do a demo. So, um, if you are interested in developing an application, this is one of the libraries you can use. The Indian CXX library. It is uh, the X uh, it is a, a C++ library that has uh, some very um, that has all the features I talked about in the earlier slide. Um, it supports sending interest, receiving data, fetching certificates, validating data, encrypting and decrypting data, and other functions. And we have used this uh, exper exper experimental library in NFD. NLSR, Indian Tools, Chrono Chat, RepoNG, these are some, uh, uh, this is the forward I mentioned. 
this is a routing product. This, uh, this is a set of tools that allow you to um, diagnose problems or um, make some simple applications. And uh, Chrono Chat is a chat application. Repo NG is uh, an implementation of the repo. Um, if, if you are interested in working uh, with this library, you can go to this URL and find more information. You can download the software uh, as well. And another library, set of libraries, is called NDNCCL. And it provides a common API for your application, but it uses, there, there's a set of libraries. They use different languages. For example, NDNCPP uses C++, JNDN uses Java, and Py NDN uses Python, NDNJS uses JavaScript, NDN.NET uses C Sharp, and NDN Squirrel uses the Squirrel language. And uh, all of them follow the previous library I talked about. The NDN CXX is a reference implementation for all these libraries. And uh, these libraries are used in NDN RTC, NDN Con, and NFT Android, um, the, the software packages. If you can uh, obtain the, these libraries from this URL. So if you have applications that uh, run on Android, you may want to use the JNDN library. So uh, they support different platforms and different applications. Um, one more uh, new concept in NDN is to support multi-party transport, transport, data transport. Currently, in IP, you have TCP or UDP, right? Applications use um, TCP or UDP or uh, SCTP, these um, transport uh, mechanisms. They support a one-to-one -one transfer. But um, in the end, we need to support multi-party sharing. We, we need a different abstraction, right? In, one-to-one -one communication, you can send the data to a destination and uh, the other side can send you data as well using your address. But it, we have a data-centric architecture. There is no address. So how do you do data sharing? How do you make sure that everyone has the data? Or how do you make sure that everyone in a chat group has the same set of chat messages? The basic idea is you need to do something called set reconciliation between the participants in, um, in an application. So basically, they need to represent their data set using some compact data structure. And then this um, data structure can represent the current state uh, of data in every participant. And then they can exchange this data structure with each other to detect if there's something missing. Okay, if there's anything missing, then they can um, use that name to request the missing data. So basically, we we need to use a, a set of reconciliation mechanism to detect uh, the missing data name. Then you can retrieve the missing data. That's how. Uh, in the end, you can do transport. It, you, you cannot do TCP. TCP is not the right transport mechanism. So you do something based on data name. You have to synchronize the data name, and then you can retrieve the missing data. And we have de developed several sync protocols, inclu including ChronoSync, iSync, PSync, RoundSync, VectorSync, and DSSN. These sync protocols, they uh, support different uh, environments. For example, if you want uh, to use sync in a stable environment, you can use these sync mechanisms because they uh, 
usually handle a, sta a relatively stable set of data. If you want to uh, do synchronization in a wireless environment, you can use DSS and um, it can handle more dynamic data um, sets. Okay. Um, and um, storage is another com important component of application. Um, almost every application needs uh, some kind of storage. But um, there, there are many options for you. Um, NDM already provides opportunistic caching for data storage, but you cannot, applications cannot rely on these opportunistic caches. Um, so they can use their own in store, uh, in memory storage. This is something uh, our libraries support. The producers can produce data and the data can be stored in memory to serve um, consumers. That's something the libraries pr provide. And also, um, we have repo. Uh, for example, repo and G can help uh, producers store data. So once the producers store data, uh, sorry, generate data, they can insert the data into repos. So the consumers can fetch the data from the repos instead of the producers. This way, the producers don't have to be online all the time. Their data can be served by the repos. Okay, so the, uh, one repo can serve multiple producers and different applications. So that's another important component of application development. Um, so here, what do we mean by second generation application? Um, basically, over the past years of um, development, we have um, now um, developed a new set of um, tools to support application development. Like Sync and Repo, these are not simple in interest and data exchange. Um, this, these tools, uh, these new concepts, they are built on top of the interest and data exchange, and they can be used by the applications to um, better um, support different um, types of data exchanges. And um, we have. Uh, developed a new uh, generation of applications. For example, AR um, a browser, it uses the NDRTC as a library. And um, uh, there's a new common name library that um, provides a higher level of abstraction uh, based on the interest of data exchange. I didn't talk much about the common name library, but if you're interested, you can talk to Jeff Thompson. Oh, okay. You, oh, sorry. Okay. Um, and we're going to um, this new generation of applications will address more complex issues, um, the interactions between um, the forwarding plane and application design, and uh, cross-layer optimization for wireless. And, and we are going to uh, we we can support more granular um, security and uh, better use, usability of security. So that's what we mean by second generation application. If you want to know more, the main project website, NDM website is nameddata.net. And all the NFT uh, core libraries and other software packages are on our GitHub site. Um, it's github.com slash named data. And the, I'm li I listed a few papers that uh, you can read to have a, a better understanding of the architecture. That the first one is uh, the Indian paper published in 2014. And we have a newer um, version of that that will appear in October in the Milcom conference. And if you're interested in that um, paper, you can um, 
you can uh, go to the Milcom website, it will be published there. Um, that one talks more about how you can support more dynamic environment using this architecture. Um, and then we, uh, the second one is about schema ties trust. How can you use names to derive the trust relationship? Um, and the third one is uh, new synchronization protocol that have been developed for, oh, sorry, uh, this is a survey of the sync protocols I talked about because there is no in-depth uh, discussion about sync here. So if you want to uh, know more about sync, you can read this paper. It compares different types of sync protocols we have developed, uh, including chronosync, p-sync, i-sync, uh, and the, DSN, uh, the new wireless sync protocol. 